Hello everybody, Shogun into 1000 and for duty. Welcome back to an episode of my Bullion Diamond Hooplock Nuzlocke. In the last episode, we finished up Team Galactic for good. We do not have to deal with them anymore for the rest of the playthrough. And in this episode, one thing stands in our way now. The legendary Pokemon... Dialga. Now one thing I actually do want to point out immediately upon doing this. I do have the Master Ball. I am not going to hesitate using it. But at the same time, I am not going to be considering using Dialga in my Nuzlocke unless necessary. And that means either if um, I need to bring Dialga into the team because I'm dealing with a situation where it is like I only have one um, spare Pokemon left. Or something else. So anyway. Let's head up to Dialga. And I'm going to let you listen to the music a little bit. Yeah, I think it was to say that I should like stop it there because obviously Nintendo are very strict about their music being played because they love to accuse people of copyright all the time, which honestly does annoy me. So yeah, Dialga, the temporal Pokemon. It has the power to control time. It appears in Sinnoh region myths as an ancient deity. Sorry, one of my guests has actually decided to join me. Timmy, Sorry, Timmy, but I'm doing a recording. Okay? I can't have you on my bed. Good boy. Yeah, I'll just tell you politely encouraging him to go downstairs because I don't want him to jump in front of my iPad screen because he is a big cat. Um, you know, I might as well give Dialga a nickname. I think we're going to call you Tempora. And your neutral nature with your highest IV, your highest IV, yes, being speed. Nothing wrong with that. We'll send you to the box. And yes, you, yes, you do pay us. Oh my God. Why did my, why did my throat squeak then? <laughs> but yeah, like the background when you fight Dialga is actually really nice to look at, honestly. Because when you actually see that it looks all corrupted in that, it's just really. Interesting. Right. Bella, I don't know how you... You were magnificent. Truly you were incredible. I've lived for 60 years and I've never been thrilled like this. Yeah, for seeing me through a Master Board and Legendary Pokemon. <laughs> Since the last time the professor did a lot of research, he became very worried about you, Bella. So he came out to a place as terrible as this. Well, I'm glad to see you're safe. 
Let's leave his place already. No one has the right to take away anyone's future or anyone's world. True. Now, try as you like. Actually, you can go back in here. Um, if you head to the back, the Adamant Orb. This is the signature held item for Dialga. It boosts the power of his steel and dragon type moves. Other Pokemon you can actually... So no, uh, if you're playing Shining Pearl, you would get the Lustrous Orb, which will boost the power of Palkia's um, typing of water and dragon instead. When I actually had these items originally, the Adamant Orb and the Lustrous Orb, I thought, at first, that those orbs were capable of being used on other Pokemon besides Dialga and Palkia. Until I discovered that no matter how hard you try, you cannot use them. Wait. Really? You can't use... Alright. Apparently you can't use flying here. Right, do I have a Pokemon that can keep... That is capable of using the move Dig. Even though I don't really teach Dig to any of my Pokemon personally. Uh, does not look like that I... Oh! Hip up a toss. Right, Wilson will put you in temporarily. And then we'll use Dig. And that will instantly let us go out of uh, Mount Coronet. Now let's put Mew back in. And do you know what? Maybe I could actually like mix the team around a little bit. I mean, we still got Clefairy. But I want to bring Lucario back out. I'm going to swap Palindrome for Justy. And uh, I'm just going to go into the summary to make sure that everybody has their 50% stab moves at the very top. So that way it's easiest for me. Okay. Now we can use fly. And I'm going to fly over to Pastoria City. Since our next destination is... All the way to the far east. I will apologize in case if my commentary may be a little bit off putting. It's because it's not easy for me to come up with a commentary in games like this. Specifically when it's like. Um, in the past, I was actually known to like do episodes galore. So it's like, I can do two episodes, import them into my old laptop, and then just do it non-stop until it just couldn't take anymore. But I decided I'm going to stop using my old computer because I did not want to wait like half an hour for it to fully load just for me to do exactly what I wanted to do. So in this case... I decided to use my new computer because my new computer can literally load in five seconds and even more so is the fact that um, it doesn't take as long to upload videos onto YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to bother catching you float sword because I think I tried to use a weasel and I lost it. Right, TM for raw.
Yeah, kind of random that you can find both a Floatzel and a Boizel here. I, s I have seriously ne not caught a Boizel. Well, that surprises me. I thought I did. <laughs> Literally, I honestly thought that I had a weasel in our playthrough and I lost it. I guess I... I guess I didn't. Uh, right. I've actually never seen the movie. Um. Hang on. No, so it's not, not that. Um. I remember that there was a Lifeguard movie. That uh, David Hasselhoff was a part of. I actually never seen it. But. I guess you could theoretically say. That one. Of the actors. That was in that movie. Is called Kristen Bell. So. I think. We will call this. Weasel Kristen after an actress who played the role as a lifeguard because that's basically what Weasel is. Weasel is a lifeguard Pokemon. And Dossel. Well, I'm definitely having better luck with catching Pokemon of a certain nature in this game than I am when I uh, was playing Pokemon Violet because. Um, Obviously, I'm not sure if it was earlier today or yesterday when I made a comment on Purple Cliff's most recent uh, YouTube upload of if he laughs, he loses a Pokemon. And I said, it's been a long time since we have seen him do a YouTube video where um, he uses TikTok to decide his team for every important fight. And I thought for him, why not do that on Pokemon Violet? Because I was actually in the middle of doing it myself. Except I realized a couple of things with it. One of them was the fact that it's random about what I what Pokemon it will give you and um, it was actually giving me one Pokemon where it's like, it gave me Fugoko, and the next minute it gave me Quaxly, and I then realized, because I was using this account that does not use the Nintendo Switch Online, I could not connect to Pokemon Home to transfer any Pokemon in there into my game. So... I decided to bottle the idea in general, but what I actually found kind of like crazy about it is the fact like when it comes to those sorts of challenges where TikTok decides your team, I'm not really a TikTok person, honestly, but I had to download TikTok because that's the only program I know of that has that feature where you see Pokeballs on your screen when you're taking a selfie and it randomly generates Pokemon shown on the screen for you to use. And yesterday, I kid you not, it randomly gave me these six exact Pokemon. It gave me Tatsuguri, Glimit, Shiny Belly Bolt, Shiny Grafii, Shiny Clodsire, and Shiny Chine Pal. 
It literally gave me those Pokemon yesterday. And today, after beating the bug type gym, I used that TikTok roll thing again. And once again, it gave me those six exact Pokemon. And there's actually a big problem with it. The biggest problem is the fact that um, if I was to use those Pokemon, I would have to do the following of breeding non-stop or basically find the pre evolved form Pokemon in the wild and hope to find them as a shiny for the ones that actually were shiny. But Chine Pal is one of the four ruin legendaries of Paldea and that Pokemon is considered shiny locked. You cannot obtain a shiny legendary at all in that game. Um, you yeah, know, I'm just, I'm just going to call this Mr. My Mimo. Don't ask me why. Lacks nature, yeah, okay, there's the bad nature. And he also had a really good ability too. Filter. Reduces the power of super effective dam attacks taken. That's actually pretty good. But um, a little bit, you know. Um, do you know what? Let's go into the Grand Underground. And see if any Pokemon that we could catch, that we could theoretically use. Oh, this took me close to where the Dazzling Cave is. Alright. Well, speaking of Mr. Mine, there's one right there. Um, so I'm just having a quick look at something. Right, okay. Right, so there's Kadabra. God's sake, running into walls. Uh, yeah, no surprise seeing a Ghastly. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. Just two Mr. Mimes, a Kadabra, and a Ghastly. Alright, let's see what's in this room. If it's not important, then we'll just move on. Sand Seer Kid, we've got a Ponyta, a Scorpion and Onyx. Uh, we don't need to worry about... Any... Okay, yeah, Ponyta we've already caught. Oh wow, and Onyx is actually guarding an item. It's a piece of charcoal, okay. Honestly, I thought that was going to be something else. And I'm also a bit disappointed to actually see just Onyx, Scorpi, and Ponyta here. Uh, oh my god, oh my god. Just constantly running into walls all the time. Because as you know, I was actually holding left the entire lengthway there. And it was still forcing me to go into that wall. Right, okay. Nothing important here. It was just giving Ponytas, Scorpion, and Onyx. When we already have a Steelix, Drapion, and we also caught a Ponyta, but we lost him. Uh, right. Have a look at our team. I think it would be best for me to... Actually... No, does this guy have a Luxury on his team? I think he does. Right, do I have any, um, let's see, right, the Iron Play could be really handy for Justy, 
Might as well give that to him. Uh, Shell Bell will give that to Cyclops. Odin sends, just like a trusty spoon, we'll give that to Wilson. Okay. Nothing of note. So yeah, it's basically like what I was actually going, going back to what I was talking about. When it's like in Mount Coronet, or just getting the TMs for Raw and Dream Eater, which I did not comment on, by the way. Um, just the fact of having to do two video uploads, import them onto my new computer, then do two more, but keep those two on my iPad and wait until I've imported the two videos I saved on my computer to be uploaded onto YouTube. So that's basically like a problematic scenario that I have to put up with. And obviously, Torterra, hit subscribe. Remember, you should do that if you want to be notified more of my content. Because honestly, I do deserve a load of subscribers at this point on in time. Like... I've been doing this for 11 years and I'm still stuck at under 100 subscribers. I really do wish to have more subscribers. I know my commentary is not the greatest in the world. I know my style of gameplay is nowhere as entertaining as um, famous YouTubers that you have in America and that. But it's kind of a situation like... I have seen many occasions where certain people have been starting doing YouTube content or um, live stream content on other social sites for like less than a month and already they receive hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers in a matter of one week. And I don't get how. I'm not too sure if it's strictly something that the Americans can do that I can't. Because honestly, yes, I know. The Americans can do stuff like emulators. So they can basically show the recordings on their laptop screens or computer screens. They have multiple monitors. And they can modify Pokemon games. So that way they can be like, oh, your starter Pokemon is not going to be Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. It's instead of going to be... One Pokemon is going to be a Shroomish, the other Pokemon is going to be a Rattata, and the third Pokemon is going to be a Garchomp. And every Pokemon used by the NPCs are also random as well. Which, honestly, definitely is more entertaining to watch, I will admit. I don't really know if it's equally as entertaining when you watch um, MJ TV doing his um, Team Sky videos or reenactment like uh, role play characters. Like he's actually done too many characters at this point. He's done Team Sky. He's done a dark type gym leader with the Pokemon Y. He did a fairy type gym leader who he called Magic Mike for some crazy reason. When he did a full team of fairy types in Let's Go Eevee. He also did Milkman Mike when he did that Milk Tank video. And I think he did a little something else as well. Like, I'm trying to remember all of the characters that he played as. Like, I don't really understand his, like, content when it's like... When he says something like, I don't know, he and Grunty Boy are two entirely different people, which... Honestly, not fooling anyone. 
Because you know that Emma JTV has a beard and a mustache. But then when he does the grunty boy stuff, even he has a beard and a mustache exactly the same length as Emma JTV. But whenever Emma JTV didn't have a beard and mustache, grunty boy didn't have a beard and mustache. So, yeah. I don't know, it's a little bit of a tangent this is, but to be honest, I know it's what he does for entertainment for everybody who watches YouTube, but me, I'm just like, sit here, play a game, talk about what is happening in the game or whatever, and see if I can try and think of something worthwhile to talk about, which oftentimes I can never do. So, yeah. And Timmy's decided to come back. I know you want company, Timmy, but I'm doing a recording. Please do not disturb me. Sorry. I think it I think it must have got an impression when I put my hands on my lap, he probably thought, oh I'm actually calling him to come to me, but I'm not. Okay, we got an optional double battle here because we saw that the sailor guy actually did rotate. Uh, Mew, you got pressure for the ability, haven't you? Or is it lever? No, it's synchronized. Never mind. Um, right. Anybody? Okay, well, Swap Blue flying type, but I need somebody that's like literally on par with the team, but at the same time. Um, okay, Martha, yeah. Right, Soul Grey. Honestly, Soul Grey would actually be really handy. Because, like, it's a tuber and a sailor. And they are both commonly known to use water-type Pokemon, but I just want to be like, double battle, use Earthquake, over and done with, move on. Ah, oh, never mind. He's using a Manta, so I should have kept um, Soul Grey in. Okay, so we'll use a Razor Leaf and an Air Cutter. And there you go, just like that. Now let's bring um, Soul Grey back out. And I probably think it would be best I should bring Gastrodon back out, but to be honest, I think it's going to be like a problem scenario where... Gastrodon probably might be a little bit too low of a level to be considered helpful. And obviously we've got some optional trainers to fight down here. Specifically three. Actually no, four actually. So I'm going to be fighting the rest of these trainers off camera because they're not really going to be like interesting to see because they're just more likely use one Pokemon that can just easily be killed by a Razor Leaf. So I'm going to end things off here. And next time on the Hooplock Nuzlocke, we are going to be making our way into the next town. So see you guys then.